We got a lot of we got a lot of shit to cover, and we got a little time to do it. Let's make it flat out honest. Peyton Manning flat out choked on Saturday. There was no question about it. If those three turnovers, all done by Peyton Manning, no less, didn't happen, Broncos will be pretty much one game away from a Super Bowl. But the Broncos are out, so we move on. We move forward. There is, however, a good chance that this newfound motivation is starting to take its toll and pay its role in regards to the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens are now looking pretty good for a one last playoff Super Bowl run. But to do it, they got to beat the, probably the toughest team to play at home, the New England Patriots. And I think I speak for everyone when I say I'm tired of seeing New England in the Super Bowl. What's the point of them going if they're going to lose anyway? Because pretty much when it comes down to it, whether it's Atlanta or San Francisco, one of them is probably going to end up beating the Patriots and the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So let's make it as nice as possible. No, scratch that. This is this is my show. We're not going to sit here and do that. Do that bull. It's just it drives me. It drives me crazy. Let's just be honest. It drives me flat out nuts at how the playoffs are going. But then again, it's been proven. You can't script the postseason. Just ask Notre Dame. And that whole shit with Manny Teo and his girlfriend thing, I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. It's funny as hell because it happens to happen, you know, when he's pretty much a top five draft pick. Most likely he's going to be picked by the Kansas City Chiefs as a first and with, with the first first pick in the draft coming coming up in a couple of months. But what is going to be funny is the fact that this may sit here and actually prove to be beneficial to him, and many people won't believe that because, you know, it's it's the draft, and they figure any kind of bad publicity will sit here and put a damper on it. Not going to be the case, case here. But what I will say, though, is that we're sold on who's going to the Super Bowl, and let's just be honest, there's an upset brewing. There's a huge upset brewing. You got pretty much one of the toughest, stingiest defenses in Baltimore going against one of the most potent offenses in the AFC champion, Championship game, the New England Patriots. Tom Brady does good under pressure, but can he actually handle the very fact of knowing that Ray Lewis is going to be breathing down his neck and probably pissing on his very grave when this thing is all said and done? I'm not a big fan of the U, but I am a huge fan of Ray Lewis, just as everybody else is. So when it comes down to it, I would not be the least bit surprised if we see Ray Lewis getting it done the best way he knows how against the New England Patriots, which is why I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens in an upset against the Patriots. Yep, I am definitely taking Ray Lewis and Torrey Smith, Joe Flacco, Michael Orr. I'm taking the entire Ravens team over pretty much Welker and Brady and Gronkowski. I'm not really sure how good this defense is going to be as far as Patriots go. Yeah, sure, you can sit here and beat a depleted Houston Texas team by bunches, but can you beat a Ravens team that pretty much knows full well that this is the last ride for Ray Lewis? I don't think so. It's just not going to happen. They just sat here and just literally decimated everybody and their body on their quest to let Ray Lewis hoist that Lombardi Trophy one more time. Look who they've beaten. This is like living proof. They beat probably one of the greatest greatest rookies rookies in the history history of the sport and Andrew Luck. Then they turn around and beat one of the greatest quarterbacks in the sport, Peyton Manning. A Super Bowl winning quarterback, an MVP, a rookie, all in one season? Kind of sounds like another familiar rookie that we all know and, and in some cases despise. Which is why Baltimore Ravens will win the AFC Championship tomorrow from those good-for-nothing, overbearing uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I know. I'm probably going to get a lot of people sitting here getting pissed off about it, but I frankly, I don't even care anymore. This is what it comes down to, is that it's all about heart, and that's what this team has, and this is what this team is going to deliver. For the NFC side, a little tougher than most people say to get credit for. Atlanta finally got past that hump of sitting here actually hosting a playoff game and winning it after that debacle they did last year with the Giants. I'm actually proud of the fact that Atlanta decided to show up and play this year, which is why... They are really going to have to step it up of a notch. Tony Gonzalez is great, but I don't think he's going to have enough to sit here and beat that beat that very hungry San Francisco defense, which is why I'm taking San Francisco. I think this is the Harbaugh Bowl that everybody has been waiting for, and I think that is exactly what's going to happen. And it's going to be it's actually going to be a Super Bowl worth watching. Jim versus John, 
somebody's going to have a heart attack by the time this is all said and done, and I wouldn't be surprised, surprised if it's going to be Jim Harbaugh. Let's just make it flat out as nicely as possible. A brother bowl, it's exactly exactly what the NFL needs at this very moment. So it wouldn't make sense for it to sit here and happen now. So with all that being said, yeah, sorry, apparently we're getting updates coming out of the wazoo now. Now, now we've got that pretty much figured out. Baltimore, San Francisco, that's my pick for Super Bowl 47. I'm sticking with it. So with that being said, we move on to WWE. The 20th anniversary of Raw was a bust. Let's be honest. You were in Houston, Texas. No Austin. No Michaels. No Undertaker. Hell, not even Trish Stratus showed up for this one. She showed up for Raw 1000 for a cameo in the back for some flashback humor. But she didn't show up for the 20th anniversary of Raw. Not even Lita. None of the, none of the divas from the past. None of the champions from the past. It's just become to the point where... It's almost becoming a flat-out bore. And if it wasn't for the Rocks in here actually stepping up and picking it, stepping up and picking up the pieces, I'm pretty sure the 20th anniversary Raw would have been nothing more than a bust. And don't give me this garbage about how much you guys hate John Cena and why is he got to win all the time? Blah blah blah. Whatever. Shut the hell up. There's no need for that anymore. You want to know why John Cena is winning now? Because basically, he's giving those little kids that you all sit here and keep forgetting. He's giving those kids a reason to believe, to never give up, never surrender. And I will be the first to say and say that John Cena will be, you know, most likely John Cena will be WWE champion before the end of 2013. I'm pretty sure it'll probably happen at WrestleMania. I'm not even sure if John Cena will even win the Royal Rumble. I'm not sure if he'll even win at the Chamber, but I'm almost assured that John Cena will be WWE champion by the end of 2013. And it's pretty accurate that everything else is almost pointless. But CM Punk's got to lose. Because they're making CM Punk seem like he's untouchable. Yes, I'm talking to you, Philip Jackson Pollock Brooks. I'm talking to you. You suck. You may be the one of the best wrestlers in the world, but you're not the best in the world. You just happen to be the best one in the WWE right now because you're pure. Because you're a pure wrestler. You're not. You well, at least you used to be. Now you're just a jerk off. Jerk off who shows off. We already have somebody filling that role. His name is Dolph Ziggler. Speaking of Ziggler. Hey, Dolph, how does it feel to know that Alberto Dorito was able to do something that you couldn't do? Win the World Heavyweight Championship. You've had that briefcase pretty much since Money in the Bank and haven't done squat with it. And you've had opportunities. Why didn't you cash it in at Survivor Series after Sheamus pretty much did the, did the dirty work for you and left Big Show lying in the middle, in the middle of an entranceway? Pretty much that contract is guaranteed anytime, anywhere, against anybody. That's the rules of it. So you could have used the bright referee out there. Got the pinfall right there in the middle of that entryway, and ta-da, you're the world heavyweight champion. But you sucked at it. I don't know who this Biggie Langston is. I got five fingers, too. In fact, I got ten fingers. I got ten toes. I got two fingers for you, bud. How about those apples? And AJ Lee has officially become the new leader. Uh, she's become the slut of WWE, and that works for her? Yeah, it works for her. Whatever. TNA, they'll get better. They will continue to get better. I'm liking this Ace and Eight storyline because it's basically throwing plot twists like there's no tomorrow. Who would have ever thought that Taz, the human suplex machine, Mr. ECW, would be the one that would pull the curtain over everybody's eyes this past Thursday on Impact and shock everybody by announcing that he is a member of Aces and Eights at a wedding, no less. And let's be honest, Brooke Hogan, Bully Ray, Love Ain't Blind, it's drunk, cross-eyed, and retarded. It's been proven as well. And if are you happy for NHL being back? As a matter of fact, in about seven minutes, the first puck will drop on the first NHL game of this season. Granted, it's a 48-game season, but it's still the NHL, which means that all these guys in the e ECHL, the AHL, the IHL, they're all playing for something now, and they're all playing for something big. Shit's about to hit the fan. That's all I got to say about it. And for all of our local boys here in Colorado, Big news, just announced, just announced earlier this week. We had to wait for the confirmation. WWE is returning. It will be hitting the first bank center for a wild weekend and a pair of shows. But at the same token, the next day, they'll also be hitting the Budweiser Event Center in Loveland, Colorado for another wild show on Sunday. And it's going to be off the, off the chain. It is confirmed that John Cena and CM Punk are both slated to make appearances at, the, at both shows. And it's also confirmed 
that Ryback will also be at both shows. So if you need something else to sit here and smile about, smile at the very fact that the NFL is drawing to a close and everything is not as it seems. We are still in free agency. We're not on a hiatus. We are not stopping. We are going to continue. We're going to keep going. Yes, we're following the John Cena marker. We're not giving up. We're not surrendering. And Bleacher Brothers, wherever the hell you are, let's be straight honest. I'm just getting warmed up with you jackholes. And when you're ready to sit here and cut that big giant check that you guys owe me, then maybe just maybe we'll actually keep actually put the Bleacher Brothers logo right back, right back on TLC. But until then... You guys get a two-finger salute, too. Oh, sorry. Here we go. That's better. Perfect. So, it was great. But if all those who enjoyed the whole CM Punk entrance as our as our theme, it's over now. We're going to a bigger, better thing. It is all about the respect. It's all about the loyalty, and it's all about the hustle, which is shocking enough because that pretty much will be the theme song from at least from here till whenever the hell we feel like it. We will be coming back on Friday, maybe Saturday, depending on, you know, how hungover or how drunk we are, to do our official Royal Rumble preview. Like always, we'll be dis dishing it out, delivering the thunder, bringing the pain. It's going to be nuts, and I'm looking very forward to it. So with that being said, this has been the captain. This has been TLC. And if you still don't know, get your head out of your asses because you will know before it's over. So all that being considered, it has been fun. Enjoy the championship games. Sorry to all you Broncos fans who are still sulking because your quarterback sucked. Oh, and Tim Tebow says, ha, 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 LOL. God bless. Straight from Tebow. How does it feel to know that Peyton Manning is that much of a sucky quarterback? At least Tebow won in Denver. Think about that one. This has been the captain. This is TLC. We'll see you guys next weekend. And let's just hope that maybe, just maybe, for everybody's sake, Ray Lewis just snatches off Tom Brady's leg on Sunday. Royal Rumble is next week. Well, actually, two weeks. Tomorrow is the conference championships. Then we have the Royal Rumble. And then we'll have the Super Bowl. Get ready for the Royal